Hey, Concrete Crazies, my name is Tyler Lay, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about pumping air and train concrete. Why does pumping change the volume of air inside concrete? We're gonna answer that question. We're gonna show you some awesome data, then we'll talk about what's causing the air to go away, and then we're gonna finally talk about why every specification in America should be changed. I wanna start out by thinking on my co-authors on this work, especially Justin Becker. This gentleman has put in an intense amount of work. This is the subject of his master's thesis, and he should be extremely proud of it. I also want to acknowledge the folks that helped pay the bills and have given us materials, let us use equipment. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. When you pump air and train concrete, it's guaranteed that one of three things will happen. Either the air will go down, the air will go up, or the air will stay the same. I did not say that. That is Ken Hover's quote. God bless Ken Hover, and he is right. It is like a random number generating process. You don't know what's going to happen when you pump air and train concrete. And this has been a plague of the concrete industry for decades. A plague. I'll tell you why. Most owners that know about concrete, they want to test their concrete at the point of placement, wherever it's gonna go inside your structure. And because sometimes the air goes down, they wanna be there and make sure that the right volume of air ends up making it in their structure, their bridge, their wall, their building, whatever they're working on, they wanna make sure that's right. And I would have too, before I did this research. What impacts air? in the pumping process. And I've talked about three mechanisms. There's the pumping pressures itself. There's the vacuum when the concrete goes up and over the boom. There is a vacuum, I've measured it, it exists, that can affect things. And then there's the fall, 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 smack, hits the ground. All three of those things can impact your air volume. And I'll tell you, most of the time, the vacuum and the drop is taken care of by our current construction practices. I can talk more about that if you want. Ask me a question later, but most of the time, those two are taken care of, but pressure. Pressure is the one that is the game changer. That is the most important one, and that's what we're gonna focus on today. When we measure these concrete, we're gonna measure it before pumping, and we're gonna measure it after pumping with these methods. We're gonna measure the volume of air. We'll measure something called the super air meter number that uses this sweet, sweet device down here at the bottom. I've got a YouTube video all about it. And the SAM number tells you about the bubble size and spacing inside the fresh concrete. We'll also do a hardened air volume analysis where we cut the concrete, polish it, and count the bubbles. And then we will also do freeze-thaw performance where we actually freeze and thaw concrete. Yeah, a lot of testing, but you've got to do a lot of testing to learn something new sometimes. We are so fortunate to have our own concrete pump, and this is what it is, a Putzmeister TK50. And what we're going to do, it has four-inch diameter pipe, 60 foot of steel pipe with 10 foot of rubber hose on the end. And it's the pumping pressures that we've measured are anywhere between 55 to 110 PSI. And this is what it looks like when we pump our concrete. We make all of our own concrete and we dump it into the hopper right here. We pump it down, around a 90, down another 90, down, back up and in. And we circulate it over and over and over again. Now we test the concrete before we pump it. We test the concrete after one time through the cycle, and then we test it ever so often after that. And say, well, Tyler, why do you do that? Because we don't usually circulate our concrete on real projects. Yeah, but if I've made a cubic yard of concrete, right? And if we go to pump that cubic yard of concrete, we're gonna pump it to death, all right? Because we can learn as much as we possibly can because I wanna learn about concrete. Let's look at some of the data. On the x-axis, I'm showing the number of times through the pump. On the y-axis, I'm showing the air content that we measured in the fresh concrete while it was still liquid. And as you can see, all of these mixes show a drop, a drop, 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 shown with a circle there. There's about a 20% drop in the air content from before pumping to after. Let's look at the SAM number. This is the one that tells you about the, the air bubble spacing. Here's the magic number here, about a 0.30 for freeze-thaw durability. And number of times 
through the pump on the x-axis, SAM number on the y-axis. And we start out with many of these mixtures having very nice SAM numbers, and then one time through the pump, pa-pow, they jump, they jump, they jump. Same thing. What does that mean? It means your air void system's getting coarser. So after one cycle through the pump, the air content went down, the SAM number went up, and this means that in the fresh concrete, that it was being changed due to the pumping process. Have you ever wondered, where does the air change in the pump network? We did, we wondered that. So what we devised was a very cool experiment. We had our pump and it was going, we were pumping around, pumping around, pumping around again and again and again. And then all of a sudden, we got a lot of students. We got students, we had six different air meters at six different locations around the pump network, right? And as it was pumping, as it was pumping, we said, stop! That was the key, the cue to turn the pump off. Then we said, go! And that was the cue to have the students come in, attack the line, take it apart, because the pump was off, remember? Take it apart, dump the concrete out of the pipes into their buckets, rotting it in the standard way, consolidating it in the standard way, running everything right as per ASTM and running the test at every one of these spots. Point A, right out of the pump. Point B, a little bit distance away. Then C, then D, then E, then F. We looked at it every place and this is what the data looked like. This is feet along the pipe on the x-axis. This is air content on the y-axis and this data point here is where the air content started. We lost about 20% air through the pump, and then it's constant. What does that mean? You lose the air as the piston fires. When the piston fires, that's when you start to lose your air. And the rest of the line, it's constant. The air content seems to change right after the pump and stay almost constant throughout the entire pump network. What about the hardened concrete? That not that what matters? What ends up making it in the bridge or the road or the building? Isn't that what matters? Well, let's look at some data where we have air content on the x-axis and we have durability factors. This is from the freeze-thaw test. We put it inside this big chamber and you freeze and you thaw over and over again. And we've picked a failure number of about 70%. And we can see is when you have low air content, these mixes, these dash mixes, these are mixes that were never pumped. They were never, ever, ever pumped. They were just normal, everyday concrete mixtures of a bunch of lab mixes that we've done in the past. And when you get your air low enough, you start to fail the freeze-thaw test. But look at this pumping. Everything that is a solid dot is a mixture that was made or concrete that was made before it was pumped. And everything that was an open dot was a concrete that was made, a sample that was made after it was pumped. And what do we see here? Look at these open dots. Some of them as low as 2% air, 2% air that are passing the free stall test. Holy cow. Let's look at the SAM number. Same type of data. We have our dashed lines here. We have our solid dots here. Our dashed lines are the ones that were never pumped. They're from previous lab data, previous publications, all the same materials, all the same mixing procedures. Everything's the same. When your SAM number gets high enough, things start to fail. Here's the pump data. We have a solid to points, we have the open points, and look at all those open points. We have some with absolutely, positively horrible, horrible SAM numbers that are passing the freeze-thaw test. Oh my gosh, but here's a clue. Here's a clue. When we looked at our hardened air content, we saw often it was a higher number than the fresh air, air, air content. So we try to show this data in a new way. This is a little challenging, so pay attention. This graph shows on the y-axis, the hardened air divided by the fresh air content multiplied by 100. If everything was perfect, right on this line would be that the hardened and the fresh perfectly match. And as you can see, anything below the line, the hardened air was lower than the fresh. If everything above the line, the hardened air was greater than the fresh. And we're showing the average and the standard deviation of the measurements. And you can see, on average, after pumping the concrete, every time, the hardened air content was higher than the fresh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a clue. That is an important clue that we'll come back to 
later on. Now, typically, we would expect as our SAM number goes up, our spacing factor would also go up, and it's almost linear. It's per almost linear. And in this data, we're showing that when the SAM number went up, we didn't find the spacing factor went up. We found the spacing factor was flat. This is something strange that's happening in the pumped concrete that's not happening in the concrete that we just never goes inside the pump. This is another clue that we're going to talk about later on. So in summary, the satisfactory freestyle performance of pumped concrete was observed even though we had super low air contents and high SAM numbers. And the hardened air content was typically higher than the fresh air contents. And the fresh measurements after pumping do not seem to represent the performance of the properties of the hardened concrete. Even though we're getting low air contents and high SAM numbers in the fresh air content, we are seeing satisfactory freestyle performance. What the heck is going on? So does this work in the field? Well, we repeated everything, but we did it in the field. Much larger pump this time, five inch diameter pipe, 120 foot total steel pipe, 10 foot of rubber hose, pumping pressures were higher, 150 to 200 PSI, and we used three different boom configurations, flat, arch, and A-frame. Flat, arch, and A-frame. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I got another picture shown here. Flat configuration, arch configuration, and A-frame of the boom. And let's show some of the data I showed you before. It's a similar graph. This is the hardened air divided by the fresh air, multiplied by 100%, and right on the line means they match. And look, before pumping, they match. But after pumping, on average, on average, they were higher. The hardened air content was higher than the fresh air content. Let's look at the SAM number. Before versus after, they were jumping, jumping, going up, going up. Again, we would expect if the SAM number goes up, we'd expect the spacing factor to go up. We didn't see that. Spacing factor was almost flat. Here's some more of the durability testing. We have fresh air content on the x-axis. We have durability factor on the y-axis. And look, these are these open data points that are very low air contents. These are the ones after pumping, and they're doing just fine in the freeze-thaw testing. Here are the SAM testing. This is SAM number on the x-axis, durability factor on the y-axis. Again, we've got several of these data points with poor SAM numbers. You would expect them to be down here and failing the freeze thaw test, and they are not. They're doing well. But ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing the exact same trends in the field as we saw in the lab. So the fresh measurements after pumping do not seem to represent the performance or properties of the hardened concrete. This is exactly like we found in the lab. Even though we're getting low air contents and high SAM numbers in the fresh air content, we are seeing satisfactory performance of the hardened concrete. These are the same findings from the lab with a different pump, with, in different configurations, different equipment, different materials in the real world. So what the heck is happening. To try to provide some insight, we did a test. We took these bottles that were about three inches tall, about two inches wide, that were optically clear. You can see through them. We filled them full of air and train cement paste, and then above them, we put a little bit of water, we turned them over on their side, and we hooked them up to a pump so we could increase the pressure. Over time, bubbles will rise, rise, rise up to the top of the glass, and we're able to see them with a stereo microscope. And we can take pictures as we pressurize them. So here's an atmospheric pressure picture. We can see a bunch of well-distributed bubbles. And now we're gonna start increasing the pressure. We increase it a little bit and they move. We increase it a little bit more and look at these bubbles. Some of them look a little bit different. Let's increase it more. Oh my gosh, they're changing. Let's increase it more. Now let's pay attention to these bubbles over here because at this pressure step, they're around, and the next pressure step, they're gone. Where'd they go? They dissolved. They dissolved. As you increase the pressure, the bubbles get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the small bubbles when they get to a certain size, 
they dissolve. This is called Henry's Law. We increase the pressure again. We increase the pressure again. Where did all the bubbles go? They're dissolving. They're not there anymore. Now I'm going to decrease the pressure. I'm going to take it back to atmospheric pressure. And some of the bubbles come back, but not all of them. Some of them remain dissolved. Originally, the air void system looked like this. Or after the pressurization and the depressurization, it looked like this. As the pressure increases, the small bubbles are getting smaller and then they dissolve. The small bubbles are dissolving into the surrounding solution. These bubbles do not immediately come back when you decrease the pressure. And this is why the bubbles cannot be observed in the air meter or the SAM after pumping. These bubbles are present before it goes into the pump, but they are not present after it comes out of the pump. Remember this though, this is a very important point. Remember how almost every time we found out that on average, the air content and the hardened concrete was higher than the fresh. I'm saying these bubbles are going away, but somehow the bubbles are coming back. And the best way to explain this is to look at how the SAM number changes over time. For this experiment, we pumped concrete. We sampled it before it went in the pump. We sampled it after it came out of the pump and then we kept sampling it over time to see how it changed. And on the x-axis, we're showing time, and on the y-axis, we're showing SAM number, and everything over here was before pumping, and everything over here is after pumping. The orange line here was concrete that was never pumped. It was never, ever pumped. SAM number went up a little bit, and then it stayed flat. But these pumped concretes, same exact concrete, ladies and gentlemen. Same exact concrete. As soon as you pumped it, pa pow! SAM number jumps way up, but then look at this. It comes back. The SAM number comes down to almost exactly where it was before. One of them takes about 30 minutes. The other one takes around an hour. The SAM number comes back. The air comes back. The small bubbles that you dissolved, they come back. So what might be happening? The pressure from the pumping causes the small bubbles to get small, 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 and temporarily dissolve. Temporarily dissolve. Good performance in petrographic analysis, freeze-thaw testing, reducing SAM number over time suggests that this dissolved air will come back before the concrete hardens. And when the air comes back, it seems to be well dispersed and provide a similar spacing factor to what went into the pump. I'm gonna explain this whole thing with a glass of water. If you don't believe what I'm saying, do this experiment yourself. Take a glass, that's clear. Fill it up full of water in your faucet. You will see that bubbles will be there originally as you're filling the glass, but pretty soon the bubbles will be gone. And I want you to leave that glass out without drinking it. And overnight, when you look at it the next morning, you will see along the walls of the glass, bubbles. Why? Why? When we move our water from place to place, we pump it. And when we pump it, we dissolve air in that water. This is widely known, widely known. And that air will come out over time. It just takes it a while. Another example, a Sprite, carbonated beverage. When you open that Sprite, you hear the pshh. That's the pressure being released. And what do you see? Bubbles. Do all the bubbles come out at once. No. No. They do not. They take time to come out. That's why you can start drinking a Sprite at the beginning of your dinner, and by the end of the dinner, you have the same bottle, and there's still bubbles coming out of it. It takes time for these bubbles to come out of the solution. And the same thing that's happening in your water, and the same thing that's happening in your Sprite, 
is happening in your concrete. It just takes a little bit of time for these bubbles to come back. What does this mean? It means that the air content and the SAM number that you measure after pumping may not be representative of the hardened concrete. If this is true, then concrete should not be rejected for low air or a high SAM number after pumping. This means that every specification needs to pretty much change because we shouldn't be sampling our concrete for air after pumping. Instead, you should sample prior to pumping, and that seems to be a good indicator of the air void system in the hardened concrete. So let's say you want to avoid air loss. What are some things you could do? More air loss seems to happen in the following situations. If you have higher pumping pressures, which is caused by smaller diameter lines, which also can be caused by poor aggregate gradations, or lower slumps during pumping, and also in A-frame and arch configurations, this will increase the pressure on your concrete at the pump as it's shoving it up the pipe. All of these things can impact your air. Pinching the hose at discharge can help. Lowering the hose flat on the, on, on the bridge deck can help. I can make those fail as well. I can make those show loss of air as well. Managing air during pumping is one of the black arts of concrete. And these results are based on a limited number of observations. However, the results are consistent and the recommend recommendations are not based on a single measurement. But to convince our industry, to convince the people in the industry, we're going to need more data. We're going to need SAM measurements and hardened air void analysis before and after pumping. We need people to measure the soup with the super air meter and take a cylinder before pumping and after. Let me show that to you graphically. We need SAM and cylinder before pumping, SAM and cylinder after pumping, and you need to try to run the SAM within 10 minutes of the concrete coming out of the hose. Why? Because that air is going to come back. And I want to show that it's changed between before the pump and after the pump. And I want you to make cylinders. This is what should happen. We should show the SAM number should go up, but the spacing factors are going to be almost constant. This means that the pump changed the air, but it only did it temporarily. And the air came back. And I need your help. I need people to help collect this data. If you do not have a super air meter, and if you're in one of these states that I have listed, then I have trained people locally that can come out and possibly sample your job site. You just need to let me know when you're going to pump air and train concrete. If you have a SAM, by all means, we would love it if you could help us. My group will do the petrographic analysis, or at least we'll do enough of them until we put this to bed. I need you to take a picture of the bat sheet. I need that information. I need you also to take a picture of the pump configuration and give me some details about the pump make and model. So I want to see what does the boom look like when you sample your concrete and some information about the, the pump make and model. And please send me an email if you want to help to tyler.lay at okstate.edu. I'm going to make it really big on the screen right now. And also, it's below in the notes for the video. So in conclusion, the SAM was an invaluable tool to give insights into how pumping impacted the air void system of the concrete. Pumping was observed to modify the air content and SAM number in both the lab testing and the field testing based on the hardened air void analysis, freeze-thaw testing data, changing SAM number over time in both the lab and the field, the air seems to return to the concrete after pumping with similar volume and spacing as was in the concrete before pumping. This means that if you went into the pump at 10% air, because you wanted to come out of the pump at 6% air, that hardened concrete is gonna be much, much closer to 10% air. And that's usually not what we want inside our structures. 
Thank you so much for watching my video. I want to say a huge thanks to my buddies at the Michigan Concrete Association. They've actually been promoting my YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, MCA. You guys are awesome. Hey, I am obsessed with concrete. I hope you can tell. I love it so much. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. Give me a comment. I want to change our industry. But to do it, I've got to change people. And I need your help doing it too. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.